The sacred field of heavy metal. A desert of mud. This is Wacken in the summer of 2023. The metal festival is traditionally held on the first weekend in August. But summer in northern Germany always has a surprise in store. Tens of thousands of fans from all over the world have made the voyage. Faster, harder, louder. That's what lovers of hard-hitting guitar music want. What awaits them? Four days of headbanger parties, heavy rain, and a festival landscape turned to mud. For many heavy metal fans, this year, the journey ends prematurely. They will not make it to Wacken. Weeks of rain have turned the festival grounds into a quagmire. Some only make it to the campground with help. Others are less fortunate. Weather conditions have forced organizers to close the site. Thousands of fans are stranded in collective parking areas like this one in Hamburg. But a true metalhead puts on a brave face. We're flooded in Wacken, that's why we're here. Everything is battened down. We're supposed to be going to Wacken, but now we're going to stay here for a bit. We're on our way to Wacken and our arrival has been cancelled. We're stranded. Wacken, party in the parking lot. Now we have to camp here and make the best of it. They don't know if their patience will pay off, but hope springs eternal. What used to be a campground is now a challenge. Hans Georg, known as HG, has made it to the site. He traveled here from Bakeda, a small village in Lower Saxony, with his family. Now he's making the best of it. A year without Wacken is no option for the 56-year-old. Lots of folks might not want to believe it, but to me, this is actually the most important week of the year. I plan everything around Wacken. We should have been at a silver anniversary party that week, but I didn't give a damn. I'm in Wacken. Either you do it before or after, or I'm not going. We plan everything around Wacken, the most important week for me. It's a week of downtime. I'm self-employed, and I'm glad to spend that week with normal people. 85,000 normal people. Wacken Open Air is completely sold out. Metalheads come from all corners of the world, answering the call of canned beer and guitar riffs. Good morning, everyone! Uh, I'm hungry! <laughs> hungry, yes, for success. The musicians from Japan have not come to party. They want to take home the prize for the best newcomer band, a mission under rough conditions. My tent, oh, rainy, rainy. Oh, tent inside, oh, very water. Oh, Jesus, no sleeping. All-nighters weren't what the Phantom Excaliburs expected. The Japanese band has already produced two albums, but they're still waiting for their breakthrough. For true heavy metal fans, no trip is too long. They've traveled from all over the world to the countryside in the north of Germany. Woo! Oscar and his two sons have come from Mexico, more than 9,400 kilometers away. Their home country also has heavy metal festivals, but they're not Wacken. The main purpose of the, this trip is because my older son is, uh, is going to be 15 years old. And he asked me for his birthday present for the 15 years to came to Wacken. But there's more to life than Wacken. We first uh, came to Hamburg, and then we do a little trip uh, to Budapest, Vienna, and in Praha. Everything seemed fine when the festival site was being set up. One of the most important moments in the run-up to the open-air festival is the hanging of the Wacken landmark. 
a giant bull's skull made of steel. With a fighting weight of 2.5 metric tons, 12 meters wide and 10 meters high, it's the official heavyweight among festival visitors. The enormous skull watches over the visitors from its perch between the stages, which are fittingly named Harder and Faster. Thomas Jensen is a co-founder. He doesn't want to miss this moment either. I'm really looking forward to it. It's like a birthday, Christmas, a barbecue. For us, this one weekend is like all holidays rolled into one. We are really looking forward to this. But we're also a bit nervous. The two main stages alone weigh around 830 tons. More than 70 specialists put together the stages and the huge towers for sound and lighting. It's a logistical challenge. And no matter how careful the preparation, there's always a remaining risk. In the world of rock and roll, basically anything can go wrong. The main thing is to get the music playing. Markus Olma has been in charge of setting up the stages since 2007. For the 48-year-old, there's a fresh challenge every year. Through thick and thin, through mud or dust, we all have the same goal. The festival must go on. Gridlock. All the access roads to Wacken are closed. Late into the night, fans are left waiting in their cars. The rain has transformed most of the camping areas into a swamp. The traffic jams are kilometers long. We've been standing here for about eight hours now. We tried to work it out, and I think we've been here for about eight hours. And maybe we're at the halfway point, so we'll probably need another eight hours or so. There's still a long way to go. We're finally heading towards the holy ground. We hope we'll make it. But it was worth the wait. Those who have now made it into the village of Wacken are still allowed onto the festival site. For everyone else, the founders make a momentous decision. With a heavy heart, in our entire history, this has never happened before. We have to close the site now. There's no other way. We've reached the point where the site can't accommodate any more people. For more than 20,000 metal fans, Wacken 23 has come to an end, before even beginning. But for everyone else, Wacken Madness is just starting. And for the first time, it's even going to last four days rather than the usual three. Anticipation. Also for Oscar and his two sons. Wearing the coveted festival wristbands, they're among the lucky ones allowed onto the grounds. The kids may still have no idea what to expect over the next few days, but the 45-year-old law graduate is a seasoned Wacken veteran. This is my same time here in Wacken, because it's the music and I, I grew up, you know, I, 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 I was the, at that time the only, I, that, the only I have it was music. Camping in the northern German summer means searching for solid ground to pitch the tent. Those who've made it this far aren't going to surrender now. And very muddy. <laughs> That's fun. Actually, we were optimistic. We'd made lots of progress setting up and everything looked great. But it's never been this extreme, like when people began arriving. And yet, come what may, the call to party is as loud as the amps themselves. The joy of finally being here is too great to be stifled by a field of mud in the pouring rain. The same goes for HG and Claudia. They have a little refreshment before taking to the stage. I can't find the other fogs right now. They're a well-rehearsed team. <laughs> we'll have to eat with our hands, so that's no problem either. At the grill and during their annual trip to Wacken. It's my tenth time. I started in 2011, but unfortunately, I couldn't get a ticket in 2012. 
and in 21 and 22, we celebrated Vakan at our house with the whole gang. We were 20 people at our place in our yard. We parted there with the live stream they broadcast at the time. Claudia and HG met online five years ago. <laughs> Claudia wasn't a die-hard metalhead at the time, and she had reservations about the tough guys at first. It was a little strange at first. I was a bit scared too, because they seemed like these nasty, hairy, tattooed people. But it turned out great. We were always visited by people who were stranded, and we offered them food and drink, band-aids and so on. Stranded is the wrong word this year. This time, people are more likely to be washed up. The starting signal is given by the Volunteer Fire Department Band. The Wacken Firefighters. They take the stage at 12 noon on the first day of the festival. But then they stop. I was about to start conducting the first song, and then they said stop. We were surprised as everyone else. Then we were told the authorities had said that nobody was allowed on the festival site. So there were only about 50 to 100 people here, and we had to stop after one song. The people in front of the stage are employees, journalists, or people with a special permit. No one else is allowed on the grounds where the stages are located. The reason? Too much mud. <laughs> the people on the campsite haven't heard the bad news, and the annual Wacken routine is in full swing. Picking a spot, setting up the tent, and keeping the beer cold. The makeshift vehicle gets stuck in the deep, boggy ground. A taste of what lies ahead. The journey continues with less ballast. The temporary home for pre- and post-event drinking, and maybe a few short nap breaks, has finally been found. Professional camping equipment is key. You can't attend a festival without a beer table set. Pitching in, setting up, and hoping together. For these part-time vodka nights, the rest is out of their hands. It's really windy. A battle against the elements. Can someone turn off the wind, please? Everyone's in an awesome mood, sticking together, helping one another out, as you can see. Everyone helps set up the tent. I, for example, have wrapped my tent up completely. There are different techniques. Some people waterproof theirs at home, and others have put up tops, for example. So we're well prepared, but ultimately, it's in St. Peter's hands. The first acquaintances are made in spite of the weather, and the neighbors get involved. Things work out when everyone pitches in. A beer spill is quickly forgiven, and the less than metal appropriate outfit is overlooked. <laughs> Rain, mud, and dirt are just a part of that. And complete strangers help us carry our stuff in. That brings people together, a real community. Then, hours later than planned, the long-awaited admission to the stage. The holy ground, the sacred ground of metal, is now open. The crowd is 20,000 short. Within minutes, those who've made it in conquer the infield. Button 23 begins. Our motto is rain or shine. We've had many, many good years, but we've also had incredibly difficult ones. This year isn't necessarily the easiest. 
rain ponchos instead of heavy metal cutoffs. Organizers promised more than 150 bands on eight stages. They've got to be seen, even if it means getting wet. The boys from the Japanese band Phantom Excalibur don't care yeah. about the weather. We will do our best to win! Victory! The pressure has given lead singer Kacheng a bellyache. In the morning, uh, I... Stomach ache. Stomach ache. Oh, time over. Oh, no, no panty. Yeah. But on stage, the right gut feeling returns. jury will decide whether the band's performance earns them a place on the winner's podium as Wacken's best newcomer band. <laughs> Full throttle, the Japanese band are giving it everything they've got. Done. Phantom Excalibur's performance is a success, despite a little stage fright. Even German metal legend Doro Pesch knows stage fright. After decades and countless gigs, it's still there. I always get nervous, but once I go on stage and start to sing, I'm fine. The nervousness is gone, and I'm happy, looking at all these beaming faces. It feels good to realize you're in the right place at the right time. Everyone joins in, and it's genuine. There's something divine to it. Even with 40 years of stage experience, Wacken is still a highlight for the 59-year-old. It's the most beautiful, biggest and best festival in the world. And people from other countries feel it too. When they hear Wacken, their eyes light up immediately. People come here from all over the world. And I'm so happy. I must have been here 25 times.
At HG's, there's no loud music, but a special group accessory. The Elf Cap Gang is here. <laughs> Every year, the trip to Vatten is planned down to the smallest detail. Nothing is left to chance. Preparations take about two weeks. Our part of the group travels with four cars, three trailers, three and a half, two and a half ton trucks, and a smaller trailer with just the music system, and one equipment trailer of two and a half tons. Our big flagpole is in there. This year, the flagpole will stay in the trailer. The weather is just too bad. But that doesn't affect the good mood. And a beer, too, certainly help. It's cozy. At least, above the table. It bugs you a little at first. But eventually you get used to it and make the best of it. The most important thing is to get the equipment in place and set up the tents so you have a dry place to sleep. The little bit of mud, well, that's just part of it. A little bit or a little more. Either way, Wacken is partying. This year, those with sturdy boots make it to the stages faster. And that's where it feels as crowded as ever, in spite of the 20,000 missing fans. Wacken premiere for imminence. This is the accolade the Swedish band has been waiting a long time for. This is our first time we're at Wacken. It's such a nice feeling to be here at Wacken at the holy ground, so to say. Like, we've been waiting for this opportunity for many years, so. The band was formed in 2009, and their biggest fan base is not in their home country of Sweden, but in Germany. Two singles have made the charts there. Their musical style is called post-metal core. Dark, heavy metal mixed with classical violin, creating a sound that sets them apart from classic heavy metal bands. Concentration, partly because the band can't tell how the audience will react to the music. As connoisseurs know, not all metal is the same. Headbanging, loud drums, and crowd surfing. The fans love it. And the Swedish band's baptism of fire is a success. The concert was totally awesome. We've had them in our sights for a long time, so to see them in Wacken now, that's something special. They're going to make it big. They're cool. They're good even with just the violin and the voice. The singer, the things he does with his voice, perfect. Whoever plays in Wacken has made it. Metalheads from all over the world travel to the festival in the north of Germany. And in 2023, the event turned into a special kind of mudflat hike. Founders Holger Hübner and Thomas Jensen laid the foundation for this one-of-a-kind open-air festival in 1990. We were music fans, and we still are. We love heavy metal. I used to stand behind the bar in the local pub. My buddy Holger stood in front of the bar with the local sports team. And one Sunday, a buddy of ours came up with the idea of having a festival and organizing a few rock parties. And we said, yeah, let's see if we can do an open air festival in Wacken. It started out very small. Even in the surrounding villages, people didn't notice the festival. Metal legend Dorpesh recalls. 
And then we went to Wacken for the first time in 93, and our tour bus driver couldn't find it. It was a double-decker bus. We drove through the fields here, through the farm fields. There wasn't a soul on the road. We really couldn't find it. And then, all of a sudden, I saw someone in a field with his tractor. And I sat down there in the platform shoes I was already wearing for the show. So I asked him, where is Wacken? And he said, Wacken? We're scheduled to play at a metal festival, but never heard of it. But I'll take you there. And then we drove behind this tractor, the tour bus at 25 kilometers an hour, and he took us to Wacken. And there was a huge stage set up with a huge catwalk and maybe 2,000 people there. So it was still manageable, but you can tell they put so much heart and passion into it. And then we played, and it was great, and the crowd went wild. It was real metal. It wasn't grunge or anything. It was pure metal, and that's the way it's always stayed. It never grew too mainstream. By the late 90s, the festival was no longer an insider's tip. With performances by bands such as Motorhead and Saxon, Wacken became world famous and iconic. Just like the motto, rain or shine. Anyone can do sun. Hey, we're not made of sugar. The festival has been sold out every year since 2010. Even heads of state can't ignore the Wacken phenomenon. Uh, we have four Icelandic bands at the festival this time. That's never happened before, and therefore I was invited. And uh, uh, also, I happen to love heavy metal, so it was a dream come true to be able to support these Icelandic bands and, all, and uh, show the world that we have a good and thriving uh, heavy metal uh, environment in Iceland. A second attempt for the Volunteer Fire Department Band. The annual appearance is documented. The Fire Department Band with a very loose rendition of a Wacken classic. But that doesn't dampen the party mood. On the contrary, for many metal fans, the performance is a must. It was incredible, like every year. There were so many people there, even though so few got in this year. But when you looked out, it was awesome. A successful performance. The crowd is thrilled. The sun comes out, the mud is still there, and standing in the middle of it all are Oscar and his two sons. In the past few days, music has been less of a focus than the 45-year-old father had planned. Yesterday, I, I need to, to wake up really, uh, really early in order to buy some boots to my kids because this, it was a lot of mud and it was impossible to walk, you know? And for, for the rainy days, uh, for, you know, for young people, it's, it's very complicated to be in a festival in this kind of weather. Whether young or old, though, the love of heavy metal is too great to bury your head in the mud. It's hard to walk. Uh, yesterday, I, I had some issues. I, I could not resist my feet, but I think right now it's getting better. 
a mudflat hike across the fields. After the first two days of the festival, St. Peter shows mercy. Sunshine is in the forecast for the two final days. And if that doesn't warm you up, the music will. There's incredible energy in this music. You can listen to it when you're in a good mood or in a bad one. It suits every mood. Some lyrics are like a battering ram, and some are really intelligent. I think it's one of the most complex music styles of all, and that's what makes it so fascinating. That's always been the best part for me, the music and the fans. I love for metal and the freedom it brings. It's my elixir. I don't have a family either. To me, the fans are like family, and the music is the most beautiful and greatest thing. Swedish band Imminence has been known throughout Europe for several years. So far, they've released four studio albums, and their songs have been streamed more than 222 million times. But in spite of their global success, the group had plenty of respect before their first gig in Wacken. Like we're not the typical Wacken band, and so you wonder also how the crowd is going to respond to our music. Classic heavy metal emerged in the UK in the late 70s, evolving from hard rock and blues. Bands such as Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and Black Sabbath paved the way. The first real heavy metal bands were Judas Priest, Motorhead, and The Scorpions. There are more than 100 metal genres today, from alternative metal to zombie core. The quintet's performance was on a knife's edge until shortly before they took the stage. We stayed outside of uh, Berlin uh, and were like preparing for the Wacken show. And then we started to hear about the problems that were occurring. And we were like, we didn't know if we were even gonna be here today and if we just needed to go home or something. So it was more like yesterday was like the final yes that, yeah, you can come. Um, so that was really great. I feel so sorry for all the people that, you know, tra traveled for a really long way. Like they, I know people from South America, from all over the world, and they're not able to come here. It's really, really, really sad. High fives and hugs. The Wacken debut was a success and an important milestone for the band and their manager. It's a state of emergency, not only on the festival site, but in the whole village of Wacken. In the middle of it all is Casting Weiss. She's been passionate about heavy metal since she was a teenager. This is her 12th time. But Casting's campground days are over. 
The reason is a chance encounter more than 15 years ago. She stayed with the Plakuta family ever since. I came to the festival for the first time in 2007. Back then I took the full metal train up north and met her grandpa, Grandpa Uwe. And that night I asked him probably ten times, I'm looking for Campground C. How do I get to Campground C? And he was totally cool. At some point he said, you know what, next year you'll just stay with me. And I thought, yeah, right. I'm sure he says that to every other person. I'm not the only one who can't find her campground. And shortly before the 2000s, 2008 festival, he called. Hey, Kerstin, this is Grandpa Uwe from Wacken. I've made up the guest bed and had a spare key made. You're staying with me as agreed. And I thought to myself, what, I'm staying with you? That's okay with you? Yeah, why not? My parents panicked. No, you can't stay with a complete stranger. You only saw him once in Wacken, and you don't know what kind of a person he is. I said, I know, but it sounds good. We're in Wacken, and this is a community. And I took the train to Itzehu, and there stood Chantal, a cute four year old at the time and her mom holding a cardboard sign that said Kerstin from Rottweil. And I got off the train thinking, I guess that's me. Staying with the Plakuta family has been a tradition ever since. Just like the classic metal breakfast for adults. HG doesn't want to miss out on this either. He's also known the family for years. Hi there, did you all come back together? No one lost? We arrived three days early to spend a few more days with the family, because it's already become like a family gathering. Four generations, from three different regions in Germany, united by a love for heavy metal. Metalheads are different, they're like a big family. They kind of all stick together if anything happens. It's different. Daughters Joyce and Chantal are Wackenites by blood. They're relaxed about the fact that so many metal fans come to their home every year. We can manage it in terms of space and it's always worked so far. Each year we meet new people who say they'll bring another one next year. That works every time. With only 1,800 residents, where cows outnumber people, the village of Wacken is transformed into a huge party mile for the festival. A catwalk for metalheads with all-round catering. Grilled food, chilled drinks, and plenty of beer are on offer for the guests. Binge drinking included, which seems to attract young men especially. <laughs> It's an attraction, and many even travel here without a festival ticket. We didn't get tickets for the infield because of the weather, but we came to the village. We're staying nearby. If the weather plays a low or just in general, it's always good here. The residents take it in stride. The party crowd brings money into the community before vanishing again soon after. Wacken also offers asylum for many a stranded metalhead. My ticket was canceled. I couldn't redeem it, and he didn't have a ticket, so now we're sitting here. This also has its advantages. I think it's super clean and dry here. <laughs> it's great. It's fun. An unobstructed view of the stages is included. At the festival site, Claudia and HG take stock. Of course, the main topic is the weather. The firefighters boots were so soggy. Now I need rubber boots. It's not nice and it's disgusting, but there's no other way. <laughs> Part of the challenge was to really master the path, walking back and forth. Oh, nice beer. Decision day for Phantom Excalibur. Hi. 
Today, the organizers will announce whether the band has made it among the favorites in the Wacken competition for young talent. But before the awards ceremony, it's all about the hairstyling. True to the motto, more is more. And even more. The hairstyle is on point as the excitement builds because the competition is fierce. The international competition for young talent has been held since 2004. Each participating country has a preliminary round, <laughs> with the winner sent to Wacken. This year, 36 countries entered. They face off in the grand finale. The top prize, money, small gifts, and above all, the attention of the important decision makers in the metal industry. It's just harder for young bands to gain access to concerts or launch a career. And with Metal Battle, we want to give bands from all over the world a platform to present themselves, play concerts, and introduce their music to the world. Drinking and screaming. Wacken is in full swing. I did lots of karaoke. <laughs> There's never a bad mood with us. We always go crazy. The bands are cool. Fuck the mud. Casting <laughs> and her husband Micha are in the middle of it all. The parents of two married last year. Their choice of rings isn't necessarily traditional. We got together at a festival almost exactly 10 years ago. And this is our time out for the year as a couple. We really enjoy it. I've always had a thing for long hair. As you can see, he doesn't quite have it. But he's always been friends with my brother. I always thought he listened to good music and, oddly enough, he got divorced the same year as my brother and he visited us in Rottweil. And so, one thing led to another. Their plan? To continue the Wacken tradition for at least the next 10 years. The big moment has arrived. So, uh, yeah. The metal battle has been decided. You have, you have awesome. Yeah, can we go there now? So, and first place, metal battle 2003 is Phantom Unbelievable. Indeed, they've made it. For Kacheng, this is just too much. He collapses. Oh my God. Yeah, oh, uh, Phantom X Gamer, call, call me band, uh, stand up or bracket. <laughs> oh, 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 nothing memory. 
The 30-year-old can't hold back his tears. His bandmates are also caught between joy and bewilderment. First place goes to Japan. Thank you so much. From a financial point of view, Wacken 23 gives the organizers little reason to be happy because everyone who was kept from attending the festival will get their money back. At more than 20,000 people and just under 300 euros per ticket, that's 6 million euros. No money back, but back to Mexico, packed with unforgettable experiences. The first Wacken together for Oscar and his two sons is over. After all the euphoria, there's one thing the trio of men are particularly looking forward to. My bed. <laughs> It was uh, very rough times at, at, uh, at the sleeping time, you know. It, three, three people in one tent is, is very complicated. So now my, all my bones are like, you know, cracking down. But yeah, my, my heart is it, it, it's here at, at this festival. Not all generations in the Cervantes family have trouble sleeping. You can just crack your fingers and he will be awake awake and my brother it's like two or three hours earlier than me i sleep like 10 or 12 hours that's so i need a bed the first vacuum with his two sons for all the hardships it was an unforgettable experience for all three and well worth the long trip Wacken 23 may be over, but the mud parade is not. And that makes getting out another adventure. But silver linings. The tractor towing service is free of charge. Organizers cover the costs for loyal festival visitors. However, if something goes wrong, vehicle owners have to pay for the damage themselves. Apparently, that doesn't deter anyone here. Even if the car costs tens of thousands. There's less to tear off the bottom of the car than with a combustion engine. Can't rip off the exhaust or anything. I drove in unassisted. Now, I let them tow me because it's there, but I'm not worried. The story for the chassis is different, though. Rainwater and dirt can turn even luxury cars into a rust bucket. So, the next stop for many Wacken Ultras is definitely a car wash. But that won't help if the car is too deep in mud. Then it's off to the garage. The brake hoses could be damaged. For some metal fans, minor scratches are no problem. The car doesn't have much resale value. It'll make it through somehow, and then it'll be fine. Bit by bit, the festival venue empties out. There's no sign of the predicted traffic jam. The departure runs like clockwork. The only thing left of the huge city of tents is what people left behind. It'll be a while before the cows can graze here again. On average, the Wacken Festival produces almost 600 tons of garbage. It takes 175 men and women about a week to clean it up. Depending on the weather, the occupants of this camper may still be camping here. Everyone else has already left. For Ulrike and Gerhard, Wacken involuntarily goes into extra innings. At the front of the site, a tractor pulled us in by the tow hook. Tow hook and the winch tore off in the frame and can't be removed without heavy equipment or in the garage. So we're stuck here. Until the muddy field firms up again. The risk of getting stuck in the mud is too great. The motto is to wait and see. Extra vacation time.
instead of a bad mood. Heavy metal fans aren't just tough. There's no hardship. The camp is dry and the beds are warm. We have everything we need and we are well-supplied festival veterans. So everything's fine. Relax, don't stress. That seems to be the motto of fucking 23. Because for all the mud, rain and people who were turned away, the fans don't hold it against the organizers. The tickets for Wacken 2024 sold out within four and a half hours. A record. All right, I know what time it is. One thing is certain, Wacken 23 is making history. For the first time, ticket holders had to be turned away. The official slogan is, faster, harder, louder. But this year's unofficial motto is, faster, harder, muddier. Wacken made history as the biggest mud party in northern Germany. And everyone who was there is a part of it. It's quiet now in Wacken, at least for a little less than 12 months.